Hello everybody, uh, my name is Amul, I'm in Los Angeles, you're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show where we talk about internet startups, uh, monetization, marketing, and design. I'm joined with... Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Pelton and I'm down here in San Diego. Uh, today is uh, Monday, April 1st. And uh, we're on cup number 40, so Jeff, we're 4-0, uh, that's big, wow. right? Yeah, it's a big square number there. It is. It is. Four zero. You, you know, and and for those that uh, don't know or might even slightly care, we shoot the show Monday through Friday. We kind of, we try to spend like about Friday. an hour on the show, and uh, you know, uh, for me at least, uh, you know, doing it Monday through Friday is a little bit of a commitment every day, basically weekends off, and you know, I've got to. I, we've got to do a little bit of prep for the show, and and uh, we've got to get Jeff. It's a lot on. of commitment. It is. It is. It is a bit of a commitment. And so, uh, just for those that don't know, Jeff, what, what's a, what's the ideal interval for for podcasts or for this kind of show, Jeff? What, what have you noticed? Oh, beats me. Uh, I think every show differs, and the audience kind of matches and reflects that. And the show, I think, reacts to the audience. You know what they want. Um, I've seen shows that are twice a week or yeah. once once a week or uh, whenever they feel like uh, sometimes or okay. daily maybe. Um, gotcha. I don't know. I mean, so I think the, podcasting is a big uncharted territory. It is, it is big uncharted there's territory. There's no rules, right? So yeah, there are no rules. Even, but, even when we try to like set a fixed time, we go like over, you know, we totally – you know, miss the mark everything. You know, we don't try to like hit it square. So yeah, yeah, sure. We don't have we don't have a box to fit into. That's true. But uh, but if we had, for example, sponsors or advertisers, then obviously mm -hmm. then it turns right. into something a little bit more than just us goofing around on, on on the YouTubes, right? But even then, we're allowed to run over, right? We don't have to like, you know, we don't get cut off the pulled off the stage. <laughs> I will say though, it it, it sounds like um, for somebody that's semi serious, I think at least once or twice a week is probably the norm. And then for guys like us that are uh, balls out doing this, uh, Monday through Friday is definitely a, a, a more of a larger commitment, right, Jeff? Yeah, I think you and I are totally crazy in our uh, – I, you know, I thought you were crazy wanting to do it five days a week. But right. here we are doing it, and uh, I think it kind of works well. We're both able to do it um, yeah. the way that we're freelancing and, you know, the way that, uh, that we uh, – you know, do our work every day, but exactly. um, I think the the real question is how long will it go? Uh, is the the big question for most podcasts is uh, you know who who will last uh, because it's tough, right? And uh, it really requires sponsorship or something to kind of keep it going. So. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm hoping at some later date, Jeff, uh, that we can expand the show. We can add in more more. Uh, more people that are part of the show and obviously we're trying to now incorporate interviews and so the show is yep. evolving I've been talking about putting together an intro and some more music and sound effects yep. for this show but uh, I haven't I still haven't done it but uh, I'm really gonna try to push for that this month so yeah I think we're uh, it's great you know if you look back to the beginning we're actually evolving uh, quite continually um, we're trying to get also more uh, audience involvement into the website mm -hmm. you can go in there you can rate the startups along with us you can add startups Yep. make suggestions, uh, trying to get all of that connected there. Um, like you said, we've added the intro. Even you know, We didn't start with an intro on day one, and we've right. made a lot of uh, little minor improvements along the way, and hopefully yeah. we'll continue to do so. And that's uh, the, I think that's the trick with all this stuff is just minor improvements every day, uh, small little changes. And, uh, you know, small changes over time makes a big difference. So, All right, so with that, uh, Jeff, I think that leads us right into our stats. Every week we like to try to cover our stats. Um, so uh, according to the the stats here, we're almost at a thousand views here, Jeff. Almost, and we're getting there, we're getting man. There. And and that uh, you know, I like you said, I like to stare at the I check out the analytics uh, over the weekend, and can't can hardly go a day without looking. But it feels like it's been stuck on three hundred and thirty three views for a while, <laughs> uh, which is a nice number there. And we've right. got three subscribers only in the last uh, thirty days. Right. But it's a whole bunch of threes. Yes. Uh, hopefully uh, we get some more views this week now that we're starting back up full time. I think uh, we had a short week last week even, so yeah, yeah, yeah. getting back into the groove of things. Yeah, yeah. No, we're definitely getting back in the groove of things. So um, we appreciate all you guys uh, watching, subscribing. Uh, obviously, <laughs> we're adding some more channel, more shows. Uh, let me quickly go over the analytics. Hey, go back to that screen real right, quick. Sure. Since it is April first, yeah, and let's, uh, let's talk about that. While it's there, and you know, you don't get to see the behind the scenes of YouTube unless you upload videos. 
as much. But there's this funny thing that you noticed this morning, I think, when you pulled up our YouTube account, that yeah. there's all these extra little icons all over the place. And right. up, like you can see up in the logo, the YouTube logo. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you call that? Uh, uh, a cup, like a... Uh, prize like a cup, champ- I guess. A champion prize cup, cup yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so the, they've got this thing. Thank you for uploading all these videos. Good luck. Find out what happens next. Right, and right. They, they've got a little uh, April's Fool's joke going on. That yeah, so taken it, pretty far into it's like in, integrating it into the user interface of YouTube. To, right, right. To so, so I don't this know April's if this Fool's is joke. a joke, Jeff. I'm still. <laughs> it could be. It probably is actually that it is an April Fool's joke. And so now they're they're picking a winner in the world. We had no idea we get such a great response. You've uploaded over 70 hours of footage every minute. And we've been blown away by the variety, imagination, and anything goes. All right, so so they've got even a little trailer on there, like uh, they're trying to find the best video, you know. On yeah, YouTube. we don't we don't have to go into this, but yeah, it's yeah. uh it, it's interesting to see how far that they'll go. To, no, to they're make it. De- if if it's a joke, they're definitely going pretty far. They're adding these little icons, the whole bit. I think uh, Google has a little bit too much fun with uh, today. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I think it's great. I think it's great. It's, that, it's good that they're not taking everything totally seriously. All right, so um, let's also quickly uh, go over the fa- over our Twitter. So um, obviously we're getting uh, the stars specifically responding to us, um, which is really great. We've got um, some other – let's see. What, what do we got? Last yeah, it's great to hear yeah. from you guys at Grovo. Um, if you know, we'd love to have you on the show. I think uh, we're getting in touch with you via Twitter and our email. You can always email us info at smokinghotcoffee.com dot com. Yeah, uh, yep. as well if you need to get a hold of us. But and, we do and, appreciate you guys sending your tweets at us, and we are getting them and uh, re- replying. Yeah, and so and of course you can directly uh, you know message us by at Comster and at Amul underscore Patel. So all right, so with that, uh, let's let's get into our startups. Uh, sure. So the first up is BitTorrent Live. I saw this and I got very excited. Um, so for yeah. those that don't know, BitTorrent is a, basically a protocol that allows for peer-to-peer sharing uh, that's decentralized so that you can basically get little pieces of your video or your you know, application or whatever it is that you're trying to get through uh, other computers, other individuals that are, you know, that are also sharing. So instead of going directly to the source, you're getting it from the peers. Right, Jeff? Yeah. And um, exactly. so what exactly is this? So now, one of the biggest problems whenever you're doing peer-to-peer uh, downloading is that you got to wait for the f- wait for the content to come in in order to watch it, right? You got to wa- you got to wait for the whole movie to come in before you can watch the movie. Now, um, here we've got something where they're trying well, to do something live, right? Yeah, so let me also say another part of uh, BitTorrent peer-to-peer networks that they're kind of inherently non-web-based actually. Uh, it's technically decentralized, right? Mm-hmm. Um, anytime you go to a web page, you're visiting a web server. And, you know, that name, bit, you know, live.bittorrent.com right. resolves to an IP address. And, right. you know, it's a, you know, how a DNS resolution. Right. Uh, so BitTorrent inherently is kind of lacks that central network. And right. so we use things like, you know, you might use some search engines of BitTorrents like the Pirate Bay or right. Mega or whatever, or whatever these other forums or sites they share the links right but uh inherently it's decentralized so so the problem set that uh, i think they're getting into here is connecting the web making use of the decentralization from the web right so so that's a very good point that which Jeff isn't mentioned. technically like fall together so it's a very good point jeff's making is when you generally when you when you go to a web page or website it's a specific url it's a specific link i know on the pirate bay for example they use something called a magnet link and I think, yeah, and so it's another right. Yeah, and so I think it, I think it's not necessarily one central uh, location. It's li- literally a list of locations that's always changing for that resource. It's, it's like a list of seeds. Yes, who are of offering that? You know, it's a list of peers or a list of people. Um, but is decentralized, right? Yeah. So, so let's get into how. Why is this so, different? What is this? What's going on so here? So, like on YouTube.com, if you're watching this video on YouTube.com right now, it's coming straight from a YouTube server, and it's actually very expensive for them to like send that um, bandwidth, right? Right. 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 That's but but I think I think in general with YouTube, since it's backed by Google, Google has tons of thousands of servers around the world. I think they probably send this media around. So maybe if I'm yeah. watching it from Los Angeles, maybe they have some <laughs> servers here. Well, and they so, get a discount on traffic and what have you, but typically, right? The, yeah. Sending one video to one client is mm-hmm. very expensive. It's very expensive, exactly. So in this case, so BitTorrent Live is a powerful new web-based live streaming technology designed to eliminate barriers to broadcast. Live is an entirely new protocol. That's very cool. 
designed to deliver high quality video to large audiences with significant reduction in infrastructure costs and network delays. And that's what we're talking about here is how much does it cost for the infrastructure and then with live you got to make sure that the stuff is coming in quick then there's not a lot of delays. So um, in, 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 uh, in the industry they call it uh, latency. So the latency has got to be really small and of course you need to have a lot of machines everywhere. Uh, so apparently they're in live, they're in open beta. Do you regularly webcast? Do you want us to help invent the future of live streaming? That's cool. So this would be great for us, Jeff. You know, since yep. we, you know, we do the show, and it'd be great to stream this live. That'd be awesome. Um, they have a they have a call to action here: become a broadcaster. And they've got a, a graphic on the right where it's got these sort of circles kind of emanating from a central point, and each circle kind of has laptops, uh, and each one is playing, and they're all kind of connecting to each other peer-to-peer -peer and to the originator. So each viewer becomes a miniature broadcaster and amplifies your broadcast across the web. Jeff, I think this is very cool, and BitTorrent's behind this. Um, and it looks like they've got a download for Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu here. Um, so Jeff, how is this... So uh, let's let's talk about monetization here. So one of the biggest problems that YouTube faced when they were starting off is, of course, people were sharing, you know, Simpsons and all kinds of fun things off of you know, off of the big TV, <laughs> off of the big broadcasting, yeah. uh, the you know the big content owners. So what if I start sharing the latest you know, movie that the movie industry doesn't want me to share off of my laptop? Uh, is there going to be are there going to be a way to stop that, Jeff? What do you think? Well, it's a good question. Scroll to the bottom of the page. I did notice a link to DMCA notices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, while I was poking around, I, I did sign up for us real quick, and it looked very easy. Looks yeah. basically like a Ustream type interface. Gotcha. Um, I'm sure this happens a lot. This must be the whack-a-mole kind of <laughs> yeah, problem yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that the DMCA is totally set up, though, for you know this situation. So, right, right, right. Um, if, you know, if someone is streaming something illegally, the content holder can send them a letter and they'll take it down. And take it down, right, right. So I guess there is some sort of you know policy they've got here. I just um. I'm just okay. So, uh, so really briefly here, Jeff, wh wh where do these guys make money? So, let's say I click on, let's say a Hip Show. I don't know whatever this mm -hmm. is, right? So I'm on their yeah, channel. Let's see what a play page or a channel okay, page so looks here, like. Yeah, it here. looks like a UStream or right. Something it does like look that. very similar. Okay, so I do need you need to install and run BitTorrent Live in order to view. Okay, so they got some software. So I've got to okay. click to download. So that's that. the magic, right? That's the piece that's going to connect the web page to the power of the BitTorrent peer to peer. Right. Right. Um, I don't see any banner ads. Um, I'm not so sure where. What's the? I guess for the for the broadcaster, it's a way to get their content out without paying for the servers. So I can see the I can see the advantage there. Um, yeah. Like so think about it. BitTorrent Live isn't paying much either, though. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not they're not paying what YouTube is paying to right. serve up content. Right. Right. So technically, you know, they don't have to have like. Big annoying advertisements everywhere to make money. That's a very good point. Uh, so they can keep know, a so lean I mean, operation. You're saying they don't have to be like a uStream with a big, huge server farm, what have you. Yeah, exactly. The okay. hopefully, yeah. They, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of it. So I'm assuming that they're going to have you know better opportunity there. Okay. Uh, and then clearly early on, they just want to get people using it. So, right, right, right. Uh, I don't, I don't know that there's going to be a big like buy button or pricing or anything. Right. Maybe, maybe they, they might have some sort of special thing for big broadcasters. Maybe some additional right. functionality, some u unique tools. I'm not so sure how, how what, how they're going to differentiate the freemium to the premium model. Uh, but I think this is very cool. I love, I love this kind of stuff. New protocols, new ways to bypass the big boys. I think it's great. It's levels of playing field for everybody. So, all right, so yeah, let, let, no, these, these are game change. This is a game changing idea. It's definitely uh, game like changing said, ideas. Yeah. It's, it's definitely fighting the the big, you know, the big guys like yeah. you know YouTube. Like I mentioned, or we were saying, they they basically are. It, it's crazy expensive to serve up video, it and is, they're crazy. getting a massive discount because yeah. they are Google and they already have all this bandwidth, and so they're basically buying it from themselves or yeah. trading it with other ISPs or whatever it is, so they can. They can reduce the cost down to near, you know, very low, which would for a normal person be very high. Absolutely, and, and they company. also have their own sales teams and sales force, so they can go ahead and get these advertisers on board. So they can also get these blue chip brand advertisers to start, you know, helping them sp spend money on their network. 
and so that helps defray their costs. So obviously the little guy doesn't have access to that kind of thing. Uh, but with something like this, with the, this new protocol, uh, you can bypass that and go direct, and you know obviously have the possibility that that, that scale. The biggest issue, of course, is then you need to have everybody using their bro BitTorrent live protocol. So the the, the chicken egg yeah, thing starts true. to happen here. You need to have yeah. More there people. is a downloadable thing that you have to have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there's that issue. So uh, you uh, know, but but that is the I like that you, you know you're addressing. It is a power. It is a protocol change. Like. Yeah. There is a missing link there between the browser and the peer-to-peer -peer stuff. Uh, this is coming straight from BitTorrent, right? So that's yeah. pretty pretty big and powerful. Yeah. Uh, another technology I know I've talked to you about offline is WebRTC, yeah. uh, which I believe is supposed to be like the web standard of peer-to-peer. -peer, yeah, yeah, which uh, is what they're pushing now, yeah. So. Yeah. Because yeah, it'd basically be like this without the download. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll keep following that. But yeah, yeah. The WebRTC. Give these guys a yeah, the WebRTC stuff is very, very exciting. Um, I think uh, Firefox went ahead and joined on to that. So now we've got Chrome, Firefox. I'm assuming if it's WebKit-based, uh, Safari can't be far behind. And then that just leaves the outlier, which is Microsoft, to possibly join in. But if that becomes a standard, I, th this whole peer-to-peer -peer thing could really be a game changer. Um, I'm really excited about that technology. Yeah, I mean, the really, really big game changer. I'm sure we'll have continued conversations about how we can use this in every application. Absolutely, the little guy especially. All right, so next up is, uh, we covered Floaty before, the next up is Drip. Okay. Yeah, what's this one all about? Yeah, Drip. I saw this and I got really excited because this is right up my alley. Um, Drip, let's use email and years of best practices in parenthesis to create a double digit <laughs> jump in your conversion rate. So, um, looks like this is an email startup. I love email startups. Uh, increase trials and purchases up to 30% by reconnecting with one time visitors via email. Turn drive by visitors into customers using the most con 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 conversion focused email platform ever built. Drip is designed to provide a 5 to 10x return on your monthly investment. Spending $1 <laughs> to make 10 seems like a good idea to us. If the math works right. out for you, I like that. If that math works out for you, enter your email below. So that even these guys are No, doing... that math does not work for me. I'm not going to fill out the form. <laughs> okay, so for you it's it's not a it's not a, a they didn't convert. No, I'm you. just kidding. It was like a rhetorical question, <laughs> okay. right? Um so I love the the home I'm going to say for our uh, listening audience, the homepage yeah. here, there doesn't appear to be a single image. No, no, there isn't. I mean, this 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 I guess you can consider this envelope an image, but yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's a very, 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 very minimal homepage landing page. I mean, I guess the wallpaper has like kind of uh, actual drips yeah, on it, but yeah, uh, yeah. otherwise, there's no like, there's no big imagery, cartoons, no screenshots, uh, no iconography besides the drip in the email right. envelope. Yeah, so this is a extremely uh, conversions-based landing page. They're they're going in. They're giving you the sell. They're talking about you know you can get a five to ten x return on your monthly. Uh, sign up, sign up. Keep me in the loop. Once they have your email, then these guys are suggesting that they're gonna uh, reconnect with us. They're gonna turn us from drive-by into uh, into uh, a conversion-based email. Uh, you know uh, this. I think this this a lot. All startups, honestly, need to be focused on capturing email. I see so many startups that don't capture email, and it's and it's it's it's, it's uh, breaks my heart. Uh, breaks yeah. my heart that we're not capturing email, Jeff. We should have a fucking email <laughs> submit on our site. In fact, uh, we did until uh, I think you hit it last. Uh, did I hit it? Oh, week. you know what? Yeah. I think I did hit it. Yeah, you know you, we're still you just haphazardly said. Uh, Get rid of that for now. You, you so, know what? I think uh, I did think it was pretty important that we get an email form up there. So okay. uh, that is something to have front and center on your web page. We did, and I think it was. Uh, I think from a design perspective, I think we were going to redesign it's it. Better, so. better to not have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I was going to redesign it and then put it up there. So I think we'll we'll eventually have that up as well. So, but, so more on drip. What what's the call to action here? Where where do you go next? So here, uh, this is it. Keep me in the loop. I'm assuming once I send my email here, I'll start. I'll be put into an autoresponder sequence or a drip sequence, where every three or four days I'll start getting emails about why uh, drip.com, getdrip.com is the best way to do, to do email and why I should maybe move from Mailchimp to these guys. Maybe some case studies and why this startup A versus startup B using Drip were able to get more sales and more people signing up with their platform. At the end of the day, you know, uh, getting people to use your software, your site, your platform is what we're all about. And so if if you're not sending enough emails, 
uh, to get that, then you're doing yourself a disservice. I know a lot of startup founders are technical by nature, programmers, and they, they themselves don't want to get bombarded by email, and so they have a natural aversion to sending emails. Uh, I know, Jeff, you fall into this category where you don't want to be bugging people. I've talked to friends and buddies of mine mm-hmm. that are in startups, and they don't want to send a lot of emails. And I tell them all the time, I go, listen, you know, you're not pissing people off as long as you're educating them. So the trick is, is how do you educate them? And how do you do the soft sell? So, uh, Jeff, what's your thoughts on this? Um, I think I saw yeah, you the, roll your eyes there for a minute. <laughs> well, I know you like to uh, imagine, you know, you have a creative imagination about uh, my impression of stuff. But uh, <laughs> okay. I get a lot of crappy emails and, you know, I could go into my spam box and show you the, you know, stuff that I should have unsubscribed to that I just hit spam on because I'm, you know, more or less furious with them for even beginning to send me the emails. But, okay. you know, I, I unfortunately have several Twitter accounts, but basically Twitter wants to tell me several times a day right, right. what my friends are doing and yep. who retweeted what and yep, yep. Uh, stuff that I can care less about. Right. And uh, that's great, though. You know, that's a way to, for them to get people back in a, like, really automated, generated way. Yep. This kind of loops back to our news conversation we had last week about Spam House and you know, the sort of like necessary, uh, you know, uh, to white label stuff and the the whole, because these machines are sending so much email. Right. Um, Conversions and this sort of stuff does make a lot of sense though. Um, Drip.com or getdrip.com. I'm not certain what, then what their product is what 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 are they what are they uh because they said spend one dollar so what am i doing am i increase am i making my current email list more efficient or am i trying to make my email list bigger i think i think they're trying to make it more efficient that's my Mm -hmm. that's my guess my guess is they're saying a smarter series of messages to or 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 more analytics on on what you say in your email maybe they've got what they call okay. swipe files so basically these templated email sequences where you can kind of do little adjustments and all that kind of things to try to gotcha. uh, try to help you in the creative process on more on enticing th- emails. So so they don't want to send out emails like Twitter is sending me like, hey, did you know that these people are uh, you know on Twitter? They, they might if it works for that initial that for works. that vertical, then then it <laughs> okay. might. Yeah, then they, that's what they might be doing. I don't know exactly. Uh, well, uh, hopefully, if these guys are watching it, they'll get in touch with us and tell us more about their product. So with that, well, I the think. The big question uh, is, did you put your email address in the I, form? I did not, but I think I might. See, I, it doesn't work then. Like I don't think uh, you know. <laughs> Proofs in the pudding, or, uh, or yeah, dog, you know what? Or, that's you know that's a very good point. The math didn't work for us. You did not put your email. You know in what? The field. That's a very good point. You know, on camera, I'm not going to put my email on there, but off camera, I think I will. <laughs> off camera, actually, I think well, I will because well, I'm very interested. You can go in ahead and use our info at smokinghotcoffee.com. You know what? That's what I'll do. I'll do that right now. Smoking hot coffee. See what you get in return. Maybe right. you get. That's a very balloon. good point. Yeah. You know what? That's a that's an excellent idea. And uh, maybe we can even show it on the – so here we go. Just one more step. i got to confirm thing. and all that. So maybe on a fall uh, show, I'll even talk about that because this stuff is near and dear to my heart. Um, so, yeah. It would be, it'd be great if uh, – yeah, yeah. So that's it. So they're just capturing email. So let's see what they Well, say. yeah. The um, their email capture did say you will be notified when we're ready to launch. So it appears they are pre-launch. Maybe we can get in touch with them and find out more uh, when they do that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and rate them. I give them a pretty high marks for design. I really like the design; it's really clean. Uh, originality to survival, high marks for survival and high marks for marketing. Both of these uh, survival and marketing give them high marks simply because uh, drip marketing, email marketing is by far the best conversion vehicle that we have on the internet today. I don't care what anybody says. And uh, design is clean and minimal. I love it. Originality too. I think a lot of autoresponders have been doing this forever. I'd like to see how they're different from autoresponder technology. Jeff, I don't see the little button. Oh, wait. Here we go. Actually, I didn't see that earlier. Mine popping up. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not... I didn't put any text in. Uh, I think... uh... These guys will have great survival if it works because, you know, people will keep using it. Um, I don't know that it's incredibly uh, original, but... Uh, and and it's also pre-launch, so I yeah. you know got a you know more questions and answers, but All right, love so, the idea. Yeah, so I think that uh, that that uh, leads us to the end of the show. Uh, so I really thank everybody for watching. Please uh, tell your friends, family members, your dog, your cat, your pet parrot about our show. <laughs> uh, we definitely need the word of mouth to increase. You can reach me at at amul underscore patel and at and Jeff at at comster. Jeff. Yep, just make sure to subscribe to us, guys, and uh, leave a comment on YouTube. Let us know what you guys want to see, and uh, 
we're uh, definitely reading the tweets. Yeah, we're definitely reading the tweets, and we'd love so. to have you guys, if you startup founders are watching the show, we'd love to have you on the show. Please reach out to us, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, thanks, Samuel. See you next time. Bye.